Hello, welcome to another episode of the Red Delta Project Podcast, your resource for helping you break free of the stressful, dogmatic diet and exercise rat race, helping you get in the best shape of your life on your own terms. Matt Schifferly here, founder of the Red Delta Project, author of the books Fitness Independence and Smart Bodyweight Training. And these, my friend, are the times that try men's souls or women's souls or people's souls. Today's topic, we're talking about circumstances in life that inevitably come up that can be difficult patches for your fitness journey, if you will. These are going to be times of change, like right now, September is right upon us and a lot of people are experiencing some sort of life changes. They're going away to college, they're starting the new school year. Hell, this is my last podcast I'm recording here in Colorado because I'm in the process of moving back east. So times like this are when things are really up in a tizzy and it's like, what in the world do I do with my strict diet and exercise habits? How do I stay on track? The other times that we're going to be talking about are times when things are just kind of meh, boring, lethargy. You're just going through the motions. All that fire that you had initially is just kind of died down. What do you do then? And we'll also be talking about being at the end of your rope. You've been fairly diligent about your diet and exercise habits, but you've reached a point where you're just starting to feel like, I don't know how much longer I can keep this up, man. I'm just feeling like I can't keep doing this. And we're going to be talking about what you can best do when all three of these times come about. So first off, times of change, normal ups and downs, and no matter how diligent you are about your diet and exercise habits, life inevitably just throws you a curveball. And all of a sudden, your resources, like your time, your energy, your money, your schedule, all of it just goes bleh all over the place. And this is not a big deal. But one of the biggest mistakes I find that people make during these times is that they say, well, things are all up in a higgly-piggly, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, quote, take a break during this turbulent time until my project gets done or till the holidays smooth over or I get into my groove on my new job or moving or whatever. This is usually, I find, the biggest mistake that people make at this kind of time. And the reason is because very rarely do people ever write out quit their fitness ambitions. They don't just wake up one day and be like, you know what, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm just going to resolve to a life without uh, these sorts of ambitions and goals to be healthier and stronger and in better shape. Now, usually what ends up happening is people take a break or they let life kind of derail their efforts just a little bit for a short period of time. And then time inevitably marches on. And then one day they wake up and they're like, why am I paying for a membership? to this gym? And why do I have this treadmill in my living room that I never use? And all these sorts of things that they always plan to get back to, but they haven't. So then they're like, eh, if I'm not using it, there's no sense in keeping doing these things or keeping this stuff around. I'll just quit. And then they're uh, taking that final uh, coffin nail into their plans. So what I recommend is when life is getting very stressful and hectic and everything around, do whatever you can to keep doing something, anything regarding your diet and exercise plans. If you find yourself and you're not having a lot of time or a lot of energy, then use whatever time and energy you can find. Even if it's just five minutes, even if it doesn't seem like a lot, it's still something. It means you're mentally still giving effort towards your ambitions. And the reason why this is so important is because you're maintaining your forward consistency. Because if you give that up, one, you're at risk of taking that break that never ends, or two, you do take a break and eventually you do come back to your diet and exercise habits, but you're going to do that when life is a little bit more smoother sailing, you have more time and energy, and now you've got to spend all those prime time moments of your life playing catch up. You're making up ground that you've lost. When you keep doing something, then what happens is you get those prime moments in life when you can hit the pedal to the floor and you don't have to waste those prime moments playing catch up. You can shoot forward ahead and make great progress. So keeping forward, doing even a five minute body weight routine in the morning or doing whatever you can to be like, all right, we've got to go out and get fast food 
again because we're staying out late for this uh, work project or whatever, but I'm going to make sure I'm going to try and get as many vegetables added as an, on my salad or whatever. Doing whatever you can keeps you on track to some degree. Don't fall for that whole nonsense about all or nothing kind of thing. I've covered that before. It's a completely toxic motivation and mindset to have. Even a little bit is still a million times better than taking a break and doing nothing at all. So bend, adjust your plans, adjust your workout, cut it back, cut it down, loosen up the diet a little bit, but don't give up on it. Don't give up and give yourself that sort of a break that's going to just either A, cause you to have to make up ground later on, or B, cause you to ultimately maybe even quit. And I don't want that for you. You deserve better than that. So that's the best way to handle these times of tumultuous change. Now, how about another time when you've been going like gangbusters, you've been investing a lot of yourself into a diet and exercise, and you've been even making some good progress, but it's just getting to the point where you're like, I can't keep this up. Like, I can't keep doing this for the next 20, 50, some, 70 some odd years of my life. Like, this is just driving me crazy. Well, the first thing to understand about getting to like this end of your rope uh, scenario is this is completely normal and everybody does this to one degree or another. It's certainly not something about you being weak or lacking discipline or anything like that. Everybody does this at one time or another. Hell, I've done it many times in my own life and I'm sure I will do it myself. So don't feel bad about reaching this point. Do, however, know that you're not at this crossroads of like, I have to keep doing things this way that I can't quite maintain, or I have to give up. Remember, flexibility is the key in these times of change. You want to bend, you want to adjust, you want to take the stress off because when you're feeling like you just can't keep doing this stuff anymore, what you're feeling is stress from investing so much of yourself, your time, your money, your energy in getting results. And even if you are getting some results, the feeling like you can't keep it up is your mind naturally in a healthy way saying, you know what? I don't think it's quite that worth it anymore. I don't know if it's worth it to keep investing this much effort to only have come this far. So in this case, what I recommend is start to scale back a little bit. Give yourself a little bit of a headway. You don't have to do everything perfect. You don't have to do everything correctly and straight and narrow all the time. In other words, what you're trying to really do is search out efficiency. You're feeling a lot of stress and burnout because you have to invest a lot of yourself into your habits. They have a high cost. They cost a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of energy. And they're only giving you so much reward. And you're basically saying, I don't know if I can keep spending my resources like this. So searching for ultimate efficiency means that you can still make a lot of progress and you can still keep things going forward, but you don't have to spend nearly as much. There's a lot of ways that you can do this. My first book, Fitness Independence, has a lot to do with this. My general take on exercise in, in, uh, as a whole with body weight training, like my own workouts, my body weight strength workouts, they're no more than five, 10 minutes at a stretch. I'll just, usually I'll take one exercise like today it's squats and just get some squats and lunge variations. I'll do it for 10, 15 minutes. That's it. It doesn't need to be a lot. You don't need to do a lot to get a lot. If you stick to basic exercises and you focus on not so much how much you're working, but how much you can progress your training. That's what's really responsible for your results. Because no one ever got results by working their ass off. You get results by working better, having progression. This is why some people can accomplish more in a single set of push-ups than other people will in an entire workout in the best gym in the world. And it's not because of how hard they work. It's not because of some secret routine or anything. It's because they're really, really good at push-ups. So that's what you want to ultimately strive for. Pare down the workouts so that you do the basic minimum to at least accommodate right now. You can check out Smart Bodyweight Training, Convict Conditioning, all the books I recommend to make your workouts super uh, simple and efficient. And the other thing I recommend too is make sure you're doing activities for the sake of doing the activity itself. A lot of times we run into these 
end of our rope scenarios when we're looking at a result that's like far off on the horizon or we're getting a result and we're thinking, if I really just put up with this workout or put up with this diet, when I get the results, it'll all be worth it. Uh, I don't mean to be like a downer, but oftentimes that's not the case. I've known plenty of people who think, come to me and they're like, you know, I thought once I'd lose all that weight, I'd be happy, but I'm not. Or once I got the, the, the trophy or the, the championship, then I'd be happy, but I'm not. And while having a goal is important, I'm a very big believer in, in doing things for the sake of doing them and enjoying them. If you're doing a workout routine like cardio and you're bored out of your mind and you're like, I can barely stand to do this, it's not going to be worth it. I can almost guarantee you. And don't forget that whatever you do, whatever methods you do to achieve a result, you have to continue those methods indefinitely for the rest of your life to maintain that result. You're not going to cross a finish line, uh, some ideal like finish position in goal and think, okay, now I'm at my goal weight or now I've got the body of my dreams. Now I can just sit back and relax and not worry about it anymore. Fitness is a 24-7 job that you have until the day you die. It never lets up. So that's why, just like with a career or a job, when they say do something you love, if you're going to do any kind of work, same thing with fitness. Like a lot of times I can't stand to do cardio in a gym. Like why someone would ever work out on a stair machine or a bike or anything. I used to do that stuff too. And I really regret doing it. I really consider it a large waste of my time, but hell, I'll ride my mountain bike any day of the week. I'll go backcountry skiing. I'll go hiking. I love doing that stuff. And I get the same kind of benefits. I'm still burning calories. I'm still uh, improving my cardio and so on. But I'm doing it because I love mountain biking. So adopt activities that you enjoy doing for the sake of the activity. If I came to you and I said, you're never going to see any results physically from doing this. You're never going to get leaner. You're never going to get stronger. You're never going to look different. Would you still do the activity? And if the answer is no, you need to find something else to do. Because just the sake of losing weight or building muscle isn't going to be enough. But you come to me and say, Matt, you're going to be in the same shape you're all you're going to be for the rest of your life. Would you still do pull-ups? I'd say, hell yeah. I feel awesome when I do pull-ups and bridges. Would you still go mountain biking? Hell yeah, I love mountain biking. That's what you want to do because it's going to be so much less stressful when you do an activities that you love. Because remember, you don't have to do anything. I, get, I think that's another thing that causes people when they're in times of transition to be stressful or when they're at the end of the rope and saying, I can't do this, is because they think, I have to do this, don't I? I have to do this kind of exercise, right? I have to do this kind of diet, right? And the answer is no. There's almost nothing you have to do. There's no workout or exercise or diet or food or anything that you probably have to do. I mean, sure, if you have a peanut allergy, you can't eat peanuts. And if you're trying to run a marathon, you're going to have to run. But when it comes to general health and fitness, there's almost nothing that is absolutely mandatory. If there's an exercise style or diet or whatever that's stressing you out, kick it to the curb. Find something else. Do something for the sake of of enjoying it because it's going to be a heck of a lot more fun and you're going to get way better results from it just for the sake that you love doing it. Like, it'll take me an immense amount of willpower to be on a stair machine for 20 minutes, but tomorrow I'm going mountain biking for a good two or three hours and that's not going to be hard at all. I mean, physically, sure, but emo- motivation wise, piece of cake because I love to do it. And the third time I'm talking about is times when you're kind of in this lull, this mediocre area, the, the times of boredom, lethargy, and you're just kind of like going through the motions and you're like, you're not really feeling like you can't keep it up. Like, yeah, I can keep doing this and nothing's really changing, but oh, I'm just getting bored of this routine and bored of my workouts and bored of, I'm not excited like I used to be the dog days of your workouts or dietary programs, if it will. What do you do here? Well, first and foremost, I encourage you to experiment. Again, it largely comes down to this notion that you have to do things a certain way. You have to do a certain workout. You have to do, and that keeps you trapped because it's a dogmatic approach. 
It's a dogmatic approach that says you have to do it this way or else. And the reality is there's a ton of freedom and flexibility you have with it when it comes to general fitness. You can burn fat a million different ways. You can build muscle 20 different exercises from here till tomorrow. As I always tell my clients when I'm working with them the first time, I like gesture to the gym, this big sprawling gym. I'm like, treat this gym like a buffet like a, a giant buffet. If I want you to tell me what you like to do and we're going to do that. And if you, there's something you don't like to do, well, we probably don't need to do that because jumping on a piece of equipment or doing something that you don't like to do, that's like going to a buffet and saying, I hate seafood. And then you load it up with mussels and prawns and salmon. And it's like, why? There's no good reason for that. And I know people are like, oh, the science says this is the best way to do this. And it's the best way to do that. Screw that sort of thing. The best thing is going to be whatever you enjoy doing the most, period. I don't care what the science says about running and burning fat when it comes to running a certain distance and heart rate and cardio and stuff. If you don't enjoy doing it, it's not going to work for you. Give it up. Do something else instead. So give yourself the permission to bend, to change, to have different approaches. You don't want to get stuck feeling like you have to do anything a certain way. With So when you're hitting these times of boredom and lethargy in your workouts or in your diet, experiment. Play around. Take that routine and say, all right, whatever. I'm just going to experiment and have fun. Go on the routine. Go on the internet. Go on my channel, the YouTube channel. Say, how many different ways can we do a workout? Lots of times when clients come to me and they say, I just want something new and different. Oftentimes the, the knee jerk reaction is to give them a different exercise. Like, oh, okay, we'll give you a different exercise sort of thing. And that's fine in its own right. But the way that I found is more, more effective isn't to do different exercises, is to do the same exercises with different ways. So if they've been doing push-ups, for example, and they're like, I'm getting kind of tired with this. I'm like, okay, instead of three sets of however many push-ups you can do, we're going to see how quickly you can do 50 push-ups. I'm going to set the timer and you just crank. And that g gives them something new that they can do. They're still doing the same thing but their mind is in a completely different place. And they're like, what if it only takes me two minutes? I'm like, great, it only takes you two minutes. That's great. Different workout styles. And there's tons of ways you can do that. Uh, you can search on the internet and stuff like I was saying. Another thing you can do is just learn more. Learn more about uh, what you're doing. There's always more to learn about things. If you're into running, for example, and your runs are starting to feel stale and boring, enlist the help of a running coach. Or maybe uh, start to look into different disciplines of running. Like, oh, I always run 5Ks. Okay, what about training for a half marathon? Giving yourself something new to bring into your running discipline so that your mind has something to work on. Because ultimately, boredom isn't about the body. They're like, oh, your muscles get bored and stuff. No, it's not at all. It's all in the mind. Everything about fitness is in between your ears. That's why I call it Smart Body Weight Training, my second book. Because your body is a reflection of what's going on in your head. It's I know we look at like food and diet and exercise and stuff, but that's just the peripherals. That's just the details. Our fitness and how we go about it is all about what's going on inside ourselves. And how we feel about an exercise, how we feel about food or diets and stuff, it's all us. It's what's going on within. Fitness is an external expression of what we're thinking and feeling. Nobody eats a bag of Oreos because of the Oreos. You can have, like, there was a time in my life I could not possibly stop myself from eating an entire pint of Ben & Jerry's. At one point, I ate three pints of Ben & Jerry's in one sitting. Could not stop myself. And I know there are people who are like, oh, that's because of the sugar and the fat and everything. And the, they, they make this stuff addictive and everything. That's all nonsense. It's all garbage thinking because we're blaming the damn food. I covered that in a podcast earlier. It's like, we've got to stop blaming the food because fitness always is, always has been, and always will be 100% about what's inside of us. And now you can have a pint of Ben and Jerry's in the freezer for like three or four weeks and I'll maybe take a few spoonfuls from it. Ben and Jerry didn't change their formula or their ice cream at all. It's because I changed inside. 
I changed who I was. I changed how I thought and felt about the ice cream. I wasn't trying to be just disciplined and quote unquote good about it. I changed my relationship to the ice cream by learning the rules of healthy eating, about how to eat it in a healthy way and changing what I expect to get out of the foods that I eat. So I changed within and then my habits outside of myself reflected that. So I know I went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but that's kind of what we can apply to all three of these times of change, times of boredom, times when things are going around. Whenever we hit the skids and life becomes hard like this, it's not causing us any problems. It's exposing them. Like when the economy went south in 2008 and suddenly businesses are having trouble and people are struggling and everything. And they're saying, oh my God, the economy's doing this. There was a, a business and economics um, a guru that I follow. And he's like, look, this recession is not causing your business problems. It's exposing your problems and you need to now deal with them. But the businesses that kept these problems in, in their awareness, they're like, yeah, they're still getting hit in some way, but they're not suffering from it. And it's the same thing with diet and exercise is these issues are always lurking underneath the surface. It's just these times in our life come up and it exposes the issues for what they are. And then we have to deal with them. So if I could give you some straight on tips, it's be flexible, be willing to change and adapt to your scenario, be efficient so that you don't have to max out your resources with your diet and exercise habits. There's nothing as far as general fitness that you absolutely have to do you don't have to go paleo. You don't have to go keto. You don't have to go low carb. You don't have to do cardio. You don't have to lift free weights. You don't have, there's nothing you have to do. If you don't like doing it, you don't have to do it. It's that simple. And when you're having these times, don't run, don't cut and run and say, I got to take a break or I'm going to give up. These are the times that are going to potentially make great strides for you moving forward. When you're bored and you're feeling lack of motivation, when you feel like you're at the end of your rope, when you feel like life doesn't want to play nice with your habits, this is where the strong get stronger. This is where the fit get fitter and the more disciplined become even more so. And going back to the analogy with the recession, right? Lots of people have struggled a lot with that recession, but you know what? The stronger businesses and the stronger minded business individuals came out of it thriving. There, there were uh, the same guy was like, dude, the recession was the best thing that ever happened to my business. It was great because they took these times of adversity and they moved forward because of them, not in spite of them. And that's really where the strength lies, where that internal strength that comes from within comes from. And it's natural to feel tested. It's natural to feel bored and natural to feel like, I don't know if I can do this. That's okay. But promise me that you're going to come through it, not just stop. It's the old Winston Churchill quote, right? When you're going through hell, keep going. and <laughs> Don't let it stop you. Just change, adjust modify, get efficient, and have a good time. All right, there are my thoughts. Let me know yours. Red Delta Project at gmail.com. Check out my books on Amazon, Fitness Independence, Smart Body Weight Training. If you want to help and support the Red Delta Project and the podcast here, please do leave five-star reviews on Google, on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and Stitcher Radio. I'll talk to you guys next week. Till then, be fit, live free.